Today's episode is something a little different. We recently decided to host a roundtable conversation on Zoom the third Tuesday of every month. What you're about to listen to is the very first one. Mike and Matt from Red Barrel Doors in Toronto joined us and we had a good little BS session. Wes had a great interview with Mike back in March. It's worth checking out if you haven't heard it already. What you're about to hear is raw and unedited. Our roundtable talks are open to everyone. If you want to join us, click on the Join the Roundtable link on our website at 4x4CanadaPodcast.com the third Tuesday of every month. And we will be putting up more reminders on social media and look forward to seeing more people become involved with this. So I know it didn't work out for a couple of people due to scheduling, but I think this is an interesting idea and I think it's going to grow as time goes on. I just want to give another shout out to Mike and Matt from Red Barrel Doors who did join us. If you're in the Ontario area, definitely check out Red Barrel Doors in Toronto and even for Canada wide for that matter. I know they ship all over Canada. Red Barrel Doors is a big supporter of the 4 Before Canada podcast. And I want to once again thank Mike and Matt for joining us on our first round table. Anyways, here it is, raw and unedited. Warning. The 4 Before Canada podcast contains discussion about exploring mountains, camping beside lakes, and enjoying the outdoors. Guests also talk about jumping race trucks side by side, racing 1,000 horsepower rigs across mud pits, and jumping monster trucks over stacks of buses. None of this is for the faint of heart. The 4 Before Canada podcast is not responsible for bringing out your inner adrenaline junkie or making you want to get out there and explore the back roads from coast to coast. The 4 Before Canada podcast is not responsible for broken parts due to jumping your vehicle, hitting mud poles too hard, crossing deep streams, and doing other dumb shit. However, we will take credit for inspiring you to explore mountaintops, spend quality time outdoors with your friends, or meeting new like-minded people, and most importantly of all, following your dreams. So, hello Matt, how are you? Good, how are you guys doing? Good, Hi. good. Sorry, I was just re, uh, re-downloading and updating Zoom, so it took, <laughs> took me a few. <laughs> it's all good, all good. We were just uh, we we're just talking about the discussion I had uh, last week with um, with Sean from the Story Till Now. Okay, and uh, it was just interesting. Like he said, a lot of people don't realize how much work goes into making videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're slowly. Um, we just finished uh, like um, an alley cap build, and we were doing like our shooting our walk around videos today. Yeah, and uh, the amount of like times we have to stop and redo it just because. We- <laughs> Like you either trigger your words or like you say the wrong things and it's just, I don't know. It's a, it's a learning curve for sure, but it's definitely worth it in the end. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, uh, that's one nice thing about uh, podcasting as well too, is we can edit the, everything out. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, um, what did you guys put Illumina, the Illumina cab on? Illumina. Illumina uh, cab. We put it on a, um, I don't know the year. But I'd say like a third, no, fourth gen Tacoma. Um, yep. It was a long bed. So the long bed campers are, they're more, um, they're not hard to come by. They're just rare, I guess. Because yep. everybody has a short bed and with, with the crew cab. Uh, this one had like the access cab with the long bed. So it was kind of um, more on the niche side. But it was, uh, I personally like that one just because it does provide you with more space. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what I have. I have an access cab on box and yeah. uh, it took a little bit to find it, but that's the same thing. I wanted it to have a, the more room in the box. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah. I, don't have to, I don't have to worry about keeping kids around and stuff like that. So. Mm-hmm. It was our first, uh, we've done a long bed before, but it was our first like access cab. And um, it was just nice that it, you know, we didn't have to move anything around in the shop to fit it in. With all- <laughs> <laughs> Cause the, the, the access cab, long box is the same length as a double cab short box yeah exactly it's the same wheelbase right so to me it just made sense i didn't want to have all the extra wheelbase um just to have a little bit extra cab room right so yeah it was uh it was a fun one this guy um i think end of july he's going out for a month to the east coast so he's going to do like that'll be his like test run yeah and i think he's going to come back um and have us do like his electrical setup and um interior build out and all that stuff cool 
that's actually probably a smarter idea than doing it all at once so that he can go out and figure out what he actually wants, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than just doing it all at one shot and then discovering what doesn't work for you. Yeah, and that's what we... Um, that's kind of like what we tell our, our customers too. It's like, you don't have to go all out on the first kind of build, Yeah, uh, you know, like put on the basic camper, see what works, what doesn't work for you. And then, you know, I always say, um, if you're thinking about an accessory that you absolutely want and then go out and test it and then you fight, find out, you know, maybe you don't need this. Um, they really appreciate that. So, uh, there's, there's that. And then, um, you know, the only real accessory that has to be done beforehand is the uh, table slide that mounts to the underside of the overhang of the cab. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's just for installation purposes, it's just hard to put a drill and a rivet gun in there once it's on the ca uh, on the truck. So, right. Yeah. But besides that, everything is added after, which is the nice part about that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. You're with uh, Red Bear, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. That's, my, that, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to figure out my camera here. It's not like it's not cooperating. Um, oh, good. But is the audio okay? Because I don't have a mic or anything. I'm just using it off the computer. Yeah. Audio's, audio's good. good. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it's all good. So, so with the alley cabs, mm -hmm. how does it work for an old fat guy like me hopping up to the top? <laughs> uh honestly there's it's a common question um there we just you know recommend carrying like a collapsible um like uh, step stool with you like there's no shame in that we yeah. that's a other one or a lot of the times if people are keeping their fridges inside um that isn't like hard mounted or on a slide we kind of just say like you know pull it slide it towards you so you could use it as a step yeah, because it is as convenient as they are to have everything kind of on your truck and the, um, retaining the same footprint of the of the truck. It is a challenge to kind of hop up in there without a step. Um, that's I think one of the downsides of it that it doesn't come with something to assist you with that. But um, you know, people kind of they figure it out quick uh, once they live with it, and then they kind of just figure out their own system. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. So yeah. I was thinking it'd be handy to have to build when you're building your inside to build sort of a little step into it or however, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. like a, some sort of elevated floor or something that you could kind of yeah. pack away tight because space is kind of limited in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, on my access cab, I've actually got my fridge behind my driver's side. Um, I built a little platform in the back behind the the driver and passenger seats and then with a little slide on each side or actually a little tub that I can remove down below each side. But um, I keep my fridge there and that seems to be the perfect spot for my fridge. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. It's um, like, I, I wish I had a pickup to do it because um, I use a, like I have a Jeep Wrangler, but um, space in that is like very limited. <laughs> we went four door. Um, so it's, you know, I, I had taken out the rear seats and built this whole platform for um, my dog and like all of my gear to kind of rest on. But even yeah. just the two of us in there, it gets like pretty tight. Um, but I have my fridge like towards the end, like uh, coming out the rear of the truck. Yeah, I was maybe re-engineering it a bit to come out the side, but um, I'd have to like kind of extend the limiting straps on the side door to open it at a full ninety. Right. You're notorious for like having a very short kind of strap to open the open the door. Yeah. 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 It there's there's pros and cons to it. The um yeah, I I, I like mine. I like my mine's actually not on a slide behind my seat. So it actually I almost wish it was. I think I might work on something over this summer or sorry, over the winter, where I do have it on a bit of a slide and a bit of a tilt. So I can actually re reach the stuff in the back. So how you doing, Mike? Thanks for joining us. It was a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mike. Hey, Swish. So, oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm trying to figure out mine, but I just, I don't want to accidentally quit it. Um, let's see what happens here. That's a lie, Matt. That's a lie. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Come on. 
Um, so what uh, part of the conversation did I jump in on? Well, you jumped into, we were just talking about the alley cab that you guys did an install on. Oh, right on. Yeah. yeah and the then, moment. yeah. And then we're talking about the access cab Tacomas because that's what I've got as well too, right? So nice. access cab, long box, and it's the way to go. So, so you're going to come to Toronto to get one, <laughs> so, right? Right? Come, to, you come to Toronto. Come visit us. I really want to come out next summer. Uh, we'll have nice. to see how the I keep on thinking I'd love to drive out to Overland North and meet up with you guys like in June one right so yeah but um and there's actually the weekend before Overland North there's a off-road race um usually the first weekend of June is a uh a wheel-to-wheel off-road race and oh yeah that was my life when I was living in Toronto was oh, nice. you know I was one of the organizers and all that stuff right so I haven't been back to one for probably six seven years so it'd be nice to go back and see the all that gang and then you know next weekend oh, yeah. see see overland north right so totally yeah. yeah but i might end just end up flying out instead of driving so we'll see <laughs> it's a fair point yeah hard <laughs> to come by exactly so t- that was trisha's first time to an overland event yeah oh cool did you enjoy it a whole new world yeah. <laughs> a whole new world of exploration <laughs> have you uh, Trish, have you also done campanel as well or no um no i haven't okay i was gonna ask you how do you find the two comparing but, mm, uh, you no know, i haven't maybe maybe you can go to the august one this year and then then you can get, do your comparison yeah yeah <laughs> it was totally it was awesome it was awesome it was just like oh, i don't know how to explain it the amount of I guess rigs, all the different types of rigs and just seeing all the setups and all the gear that everyone has. It was yeah. like, yeah, it was pretty, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Awesome. Trisha did a uh was a trail leader on a female only event this week, or I guess a couple weekends ago now, wasn't it? Yeah, last last weekend. Yeah. Last weekend. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. So the, where'd you guys uh, go? We were in um Minden area. Okay. And we did a, um, it's uh, called Donna Private Princess. So basically all female women's event. And we, um, I think we had about 50 probably different uh, rigs there, mostly Jeeps and wow. different yeah. levels of like trails. And we all like split up and then we go do the day to trails, uh, raise money for women's shelter out in Halliburton. Nice. Because he's to thumb and then we do camping and barbecue and everything the night of or the night before so it was fun it was good cool yeah it's awesome nice to get out of the city and hit the trails do some trail therapy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love that it's, it's a female all female event i think all that's just female. great yeah. it's needed yeah 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 it's definitely yeah. Uh, get more folks out yeah, so this weekend I've got the BC Overland Rally on All Thursday, right. Friday, That's a nice Saturday. One, yeah, so it should be should be good. It's uh, it's only supposed to be a high temperature wise. I think about thirty six degrees, thirty five <laughs> degrees. So <laughs> thirty five degrees. Yeah, and you're going outside, sir. <laughs> oh, and it's a dust bowl too. It's like in a little bowl kind of idea, right? And just like oh, can't not wait looking... for all the yeah it does stick into your skin <laughs> it's gonna be gross i think i'm gonna have to pick up an extra fan uh extra battery powered fan for the in the tent and uh some baby powder too and stuff <laughs> baby wipes man that's the yeah. secret baby wipes i'm not, exactly. not kidding it's uh, a major yeah. flavor yeah i've got a good stash of those going on so mm-hmm. it's uh yeah it, it's gonna be hot but here in camel it's supposed to be 39 degrees on friday so <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh, yeah Trisha was commenting earlier that she just can't quite understand that but it, yeah uh, I was like how is BC hotter than here <laughs> right especially like Lola and BC I would have thought mm-hmm. uh, yeah well Camelot's I mean we're in sort of an area where it gets like like say we have cactuses and sagebrush and all that really? stuff right yeah yeah we got a lot of sagebrush I, here I was not expecting that Okay, <laughs> but yeah, Asuyas and Lytton and Lillouette, they get even hotter, right? So I think they're yeah. supposed to be in their low 40s. So, 
Yeah. It, it's weird, I know, but uh, we don't have the humidity that you guys do, right? So mm-hmm. a 32 over there is so hot because of the humid. Yeah, our 32 is like 39. Yeah, no, exactly. No, 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 no. Humidity is just killer. Yeah. yeah. I can't deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't miss that at all. <laughs> I'll t- I'll take 36 over here than 32 over there. That's like... Uh... Well, Matt was recently, but for me, it was many years ago in Vegas. And I remember it was like 37 degrees or something like that. And I had absolutely no problem whatsoever yep. because it was completely dry heat. Dry heat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, uh, I think the hottest it got up there was 46 when we were there. And it was just like, you're just walking into like a furnace room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 46 a little, a little too hot. So but well, at least the AC is we have a river we have a river we're right beside a river so that'll help out a little bit i got a feeling i'll spend lots of time in the river just put the uh, lawn chair in the river and we're all good right <laughs> so yeah. it uh but yeah it should be a good event it uh what do you guys got going on for the long weekend uh, going camping, hopefully not 35 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, I'll be doing some video. So you guys will just see me and by s- Sunday morning, you'll see how drained I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. No, we're going to go to this, uh, place called long schooner Lake, which is, uh, North Frontenac. So kind of like, uh, Ottawa Valley area. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, just taking a family and uh, a friend of mine from Ottawa is coming down with nice. his family. So it's going to be a bunch of little tiny toddlers running around. <laughs> and, uh, oh, and hopefully fun. we're all going to chill. We'll see <laughs> if the toddlers let us. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So nice. looking forward to it. Haven't been camping since uh, Easter. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I've been trying to go oh, camping wow. as much as I could before all the smoke arrives here right so yeah. fires and stuff so oh it's been bad we, we're finally i guess getting a taste of what you guys get of <laughs> like with the smoke and stuff yeah. in the summer so it was so horrible for a few weeks ago mm-hmm. it's just like you walk out in the morning and your city is just covered like everything's great yeah you know, it, like, was so yeah, weird. Was it was so weird to see yeah. like now like you said to experience it here it's like wow this is how people yeah you know, with that day at like Nearly, I guess, but it was orange. You can smell it walking outside. Just... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it was a lot. But I think they just recently lift some fire bans in some areas. I don't know where exactly, yeah. but. I know yeah. Algonquin lifted uh, last weekend because of the rains. And the rain. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we're still like, I looked at the fire map yesterday, and it was like, Quebec is just, oh. you know, <laughs> West Coast is like literally just. Kind of the southern tip of Ontario that's sort of settled down, but even northern Ontario is still on fire. So it's yeah, just, it's insane. The uh, I was listening to the news the other day on the radio, and they're saying that in BC, the amount of areas that are on evacuation orders is bigger than PEI. What? Oh man. <laughs> I mean, we have a big province, right? Same as you guys do, yeah. but still, yeah. that's yeah. like the actual square kilometers is bigger than PEI itself. So, yeah, like wow. But uh, we're kind of lucky here in Camels. Like right now, I'm looking out the window and I see blue sky and that, but it comes and goes. The smoke does, but um, I'm just waiting for it to totally sock us in for a month. These were not as bad as what they are up in northern Alberta. Northern uh, BC is pretty brutal up there. So. Oh, they're worse then. Oh, sure. it's yeah. It's uh, there's already two fires that are like the largest ever in BC history and stuff. So we've had a lot of lightning stuff, a lot of lightning yeah. fires. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. so I, what about you, Matt? What are you doing for the long weekend? Uh, no plans yet. Um, <laughs> I was just about to say that I have to cancel or leave the meeting briefly to grant access to my camera <laughs> so <laughs> more timing on my part but uh i uh, know i just kind of figure it out go with the flow yeah. Kind of but uh, yeah if something comes up i'm sure i'll be open to uh taking it taking it on and i find know. the long weekends there's always so many people out that yeah. sometimes i don't even bother going out right so mm-hmm. yeah usually yeah yeah 
quite often do explore your own city and stuff like that right so yeah it's always fun i might just hang out with the family yeah yeah see my sister haven't seen her in a bit yeah i'm just gonna figure out this camera quickly so yep. if I leave, that's why okay. <laughs> rejoin yeah and how about you trish oh this weekend um long weekend weekend a long weekend um that's a couple sure weeks yet. away yeah i'm not sure yeah yeah, I don't know either. I'll see, like, see what happens, but it all depends on weather and mm-hmm. smoke, smoke, <laughs> yeah, and people and all that stuff, right? But uh, well, I was hoping for more people to show up tonight. Yeah. There, Mike. I think you got to push a few more ads. I think so. I'll have to get yeah. up there, and I should have done a reminder post today. Is what I should have done. Yeah. Yeah, do a few building up, especially as as it starts. Yeah, yeah. Right. And what we're th- I was thinking, like, I didn't really know what to expect tonight. So, um, but I think in the future we'll sort of like pick a topic ahead of time, yeah, and uh, just give some people something to think about, and then go from there, right? So, mm-hmm. right on. But, yeah, and I think do uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'm still totally down for it if you if you are. Uh, do a little fire, let's call it a fireside chat. <laughs> yeah. As we used to call them in corporate uh, yeah. at the shop. Right. So, yeah, hey, Matt funny. is here upside down. Oh, upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get a screenshot hey, of this. Like, <laughs> he's, in the shop upside down. he's like a bat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Batman. <laughs> uh, <that's hilarious. laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like it would be fun, I think. To Definitely talk with Henry, talk with Matt about our, yep. you know, all the trips that they have done. Here we go. Um, I'd love to uh, <laughs> always join in as well. Rough start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so definitely. Idea, I think buddy. it's a great idea, and uh, yeah, yeah, we can definitely we will we definitely figure something out because uh, you guys got lots of experience and lots of good tra- tales and stuff like that, right? So, yeah. Good, many many places we've been you know? <laughs> and shit gone wrong <laughs> yeah. Oh, <no. laughs> yeah just today we had to tow the jeep away because it was uh overheating i think my head gaskets gone but oh uh, i mean after almost three hundred thousand kilometers it's been good mm. so yeah well, usually jeeps like especially the um the three eight which is the one i have it's <laughs> uh they're very prone to you know, uh, the head gasket like going very early on. So I've been lucky. So, but we'll see who knows. Yeah. That. And, uh, I was talking to Adam from Adam's off road last night and he does a lot of those. Um, I call them oil filter, mega thingamajig where they keep the, the, uh, pressure up when the engine, um, shuts down. Because they, okay. I, I think a lot of the three sixes, I think it was more in the three sixes where I've seen a lot of guys having um, valve train problems and stuff like that. Because the oil all drains down, and then the first five seconds, there's no oil there, and then over time, see a lot of problems with that. So I know a few guys have had to do some work on those. And uh, there's a company called Baxter Performance Set that Adam uses, and it just keeps the pressure up so that you have it rate of startup, right? So apparently it's a common Jeep problem, but from what I've been told by others, so. Plenty of those. <laughs> As you say, what is it? Come on. <laughs> Just empty oh, every man. pocket. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out great because uh, Matt's Bro. usually razzing on Henry for his Land Rovers because Henry's got some very old Land Rovers. And uh, and today it was the other way around. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's yeah. getting towed out. <laughs> yeah, the, the, flatbed, the flatbed showed up and Henry uh, yeah. was like, oh, what's one of those? I was like, it's a flatbed. And I didn't realize he was joking. And he's like, oh, I never had to use one of those. I'm just like, <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> oh, <man>. Nice. <laughs> it was- yeah, I, had, uh, I remember I had my truck flat better than uh, Anchorage, Alaska, actually. So oh. thank God for CAA. So if you don't have it, get it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Because it works like AAA too, right? With them as well. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, that saved me a lot of money. I bet. Yeah. yeah, I've got the premium B 
BCAA membership. So I, yeah. I can't remember how many kilometers it is, but it's like I spent so much time on dirt roads that it's worth the worth it, right? So yeah, I think ours is um unlimited kilometers. I remember I had a tow, not my Jeep, but my uh car, my old older car from Montreal to here. And it was unlimited kilometers, so it saved a lot of money. <laughs> so I get back. Was it not even broken? You just didn't want to drive it from Montreal. (laughs) It was no, no. The 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 head gasket went. That's what happened. (laughs) Was it a Jeep car? No, no. It was it was a it was a Ford. (laughs) Right on. She she was hungover from partying in Montreal. Wanted (laughs) to take a train back. (laughs) Yeah. I don't want to drive. (laughs) But yeah, I learned my lesson. So since since then, I've always had the SCA. Premium. Yeah. It's worth yeah. it. It's totally worth it. It's totally worth it. Totally, totally. <laughs> we, yeah. we had them uh at the sportsman show the year before. Um one of the trucks that one of the other vendors brought for us, they only brought one set of keys and they left the keys in the back seat and some kids got in and they just started rummaging through everything and playing whatever happened to lock the car from the inside. And I guess there's no safety on it or whatever. So they locked the, locked the car and uh, left the keys inside, got out of the back doors, closed the doors, and that was it. <laughs> so we ended up having to call CAA. The guy showed up to uh, you know put the wedge in between the door and yeah. stuff and whatever. He finally got in. Then the alarm starts going off. And this is like 3 o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of the show, you know? <laughs> Here's our booth with an alarm going off and everything. We're like, we're rummaging in the back trying to find the keys to disable the alarm. And it's just like, oh, God. <laughs> That's not how you're supposed to draw attention to your booth. I know. Right? Like, you draw some attention. <laughs> What's publi- or, sorry, any publicity is good publicity. Is that it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always bring a second pair. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I uh, I stopped. Uh, I was living in Vancouver, and I had my five liter Mustang, and I stopped in one of the warehouse uh, warehouse um, on the way to work to grab something, and I left my vehicle running, and I came back out, and the keys were in the ignition, and it was locked, and I'm like, oh. so yeah, the guy had to come, and my car sitting there, right idling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh man, this is bad. This is embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, oh well so you guys got any big trips planned there matt or i guess after you get your jeep fixed (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, you won't be able to afford it (laughs) hopefully just in time for the jeep show yeah yeah it'll it'll be i told saturday afternoon i I told no i told them have it hopefully fixed up by the 27 (laughs) um but or get a new jeep uh, i have too many memories (laughs) i keep telling him he's a gladiator yeah, before I started my trip last year, I was thinking, you know, it might be like the last hurrah and then sell it when I got back. But then as I was uh, on the road, I just kind of fell back in love with it again. So <laughs> uh, it just caused me so much grief before. And then it's after the experience uh, that we had in it, it was like, I don't think I could get rid of it. <laughs> just too many, too many good memories. It redeemed itself. Yeah. Even the, even the breakdowns is, you know, you got to make light of the situations and yeah. You know, it's just it's funny it's funny yeah it's funny how we get attached to vehicles right for that reason like when i got rid of my tj i had a lifted and um it was lifted and locked and all that stuff but i needed something with more room so i went to an xterra and it was a sad drive down to that dealership that day it was just like oh my god i've had this thing for six years i've done so much with it and i'm thinking about all the trips and i'm starting to get emotional about it and i'm like it's just a vehicle right but it's not just a vehicle it's you know yeah. it's, You're uh, in a way. yeah yeah it's been through uh it's a lot, lot they some of my vehicles have lasted longer than my girlfriends have <laughs> see they stick around <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's totally true what you say right I, mean, if, I think all of us have get that attachment i can't treat a vehicle as a oh it just gives me a to b yeah and i get it you know some folks have that right and i respect that yeah. but to me if uh, you know somebody says that to me and they're like oh it's just for whatever who cares if you get rid of your vehicle i'm like no man this thing has <laughs> Like through thick and thin, gotten me through so much stuff and taking my family to 
so many cool places, yeah. you know, and there's so many memories that we've made with this, you know, it's, it's, it's a piece of metal, but with this piece of metal or due to it, we've been able to, or enabled to be able to make those memories. And it's like, I scroll through, I have these, uh, this little Google home or whatever thing on my kitchen, uh, counter. And it's, you know, just has photographs of the kids and stuff like that going through it. And a whole bunch of the memory photos are the kids, you know, hiding behind the wheel or something or popping mm-hmm. out of the windows of the truck or climbing around all over the place or it's a campsite. And Hey, it's like in the background, guess what? It's that just the same truck. And it's, yep. it's like, how do you get rid of that? After that? You know? So, yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. It's, um, uh, yeah, there, it's funny how you just grow that emotional attachment to it, right? So, yeah. and even it's, and even more so when a good, when a certain song comes on when you're driving too, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, What's that, ACDC, Highway to Hell? What? Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, I, I found I, I do a lot of solo drives myself. I don't know about you guys, but I do a lot of solo drives. A lot of it's just because, you know, a lot of my friends have so much going on with kids and families and that, right? But it also gives me a good time to reflect on things. And and uh, a lot of times, even my dad's been gone for five, six years, I look over and my dad's in a passenger seat beside me, right? And we're having the best conversation a better conversation we ever would have when he was alive. (laughs) We're having a better conversation on dirt when, you know, and so, yeah, it's just, um, just memories of in in those vehicles. It's just something about it. Right. So. Yeah. 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 So when you selling yours, Trisha? Never. (laughs) Never. (laughs) It's funny because I went over to my dealership the other day and, uh, the guy who comes out, the salesman is like, so are you ready to trade in? Hell no. I'm like, if you're trading in, you're getting a skeleton because I'm taking all my modifications. I'm taking the wheels. I'm taking the bumpers. I'm taking the side wheels. <laughs> you're not going to get a top. <laughs> you're getting a shell Jeep. That's what you're going to get. Do you want it still? Because <laughs> like, then I have to build up again. It's like you've already done your stuff and your modifications and how you want it. And then. You're right. It's like all the memories now that have, even though it's like so fairly new. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to trade it in. And the thing is, if I were, are probably people ask me this, will you get still the same color, like a firecracker red? And we absolutely get the same color. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I could see you in a gladiator, but they're just so big, right? They're, they're a full size truck almost, right? So, yeah, I, but they have a small, uh their cabin is actually big so i went i sat in one at the dealership recently actually pretty roomy but the the bed is pretty short yeah yeah have you guys do, i don't think do you guys watch um sean from the story till now and kc250 or 250 uh, i know of them but don't really okay watch. yeah I used- yeah so yeah they've they've got some pretty good videos but they both have gladiators and they both now have the v8 gladiators and oh, yeah. Sean, his nice. is, uh, I can't remember which model it is, but Casey has got the Demonator. So nice. it's a Demon engine, 840 horsepower. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, like an adventure outfitters to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He had them do it. And it's just like, it. it and Sean and I were talking about it last week and he's like, there's just no other reason other than it's fun. Right? <laughs> and, and it's really upped his game on um, doing the snow wheeling for his videos mm-hmm. because he can go farther. You know, he's, he's running one tons and forties and stuff like that. Well, both of them are, but I was asking him about gas mileage. Cause I'm like, this thing's got to suck. Right. And he said, he's actually getting built the same gas mileage on the highway as they were with their V six gladiators. Um, but going off road and uh, is where they it absolutely sucks mileage because mm. a lot of idling and a lot of especially with the youtube guys there's you know a lot of stopping and starting with you know setting up cameras and stuff like that yeah. Yeah. yeah so he said just off road it just absolutely sucks but it's so much fun like 840 horsepower like <laughs> it's really gonna be fun in that yeah for sure get through all that snow and you got the with the uh, wine of the supercharger too Oh yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I guess you guys don't have a lot of snow wheeling over there, do you? Because it's all snowmobile trails. It's all snowmobile trails. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're very likely to just get a ticket instead of a... <laughs> never, <laughs> never mind trying to wheel. You're going to get a ticket and a fine and all that other crap. Yeah. 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 I guess that's one thing that we're pretty lucky in because we do have a lot of good snowmobile trails, but we've got tons and tons of areas where we can go snow wheeling. And the snow wheeling is actually culture over here. Like I got a friend, he's going to run 40s on his Dakota and he's a small guy of his group. Right. So a wow. lot of the guys are running fifties, 52s, you know, oh 50 under horsepower, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Right. But Jeez. yeah. One thing yeah. I saw, and I know been noticing winter wheeling in BC, they use um, chains. Is that no, a, a lot of guys don't use chains. No. Okay. Well, only if it's icy. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If it's icy, they will use chains, but um, it's, basically it's dropped down the tire pressure and that's why they're running with these big tires you know mm-hmm. these tires are so wide and you drop down the tire pressure and mm-hmm. you just and sort of float on top almost mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. but yeah it's uh it's a totally different world i'm not a huge fan of snow wheeling myself uh more or less because i've got a tacoma with 33s so i can't get as far as a lot of my friends can but Come on, you've seen what they do in Iceland with Toyotas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can do it. It's just the willpower, but come on, 45, easy. <laughs> yeah, willpower and the uh, bank account. <laughs> yeah. 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 We you actually mortgage those tires. <laughs> oh, no kidding, eh? The tires are taller, you know, 44s or 50s or 52s or 54s. It's just like massive, right? I'm as tall as me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they the the Clonus uh, snow wheeler guys, they're pretty impressive. They got they're they're also running um a lot of gamma goat suspension, which is a gamma goat's a military machine that is four wheel independent with portals. Nice. So you can imagine the the uh, center ground clearance, right? You know independent suspension with portals <laughs> like <laughs> that's not crawl over anything <laughs> yeah yeah exactly okay. so you could walk under that jeep <laughs> <laughs> right that's amazing yeah. so yeah but yeah yeah it's, it, you guys that's too bad you guys don't have good snow wheeling out there but yeah well and it's like you love uh i actually enjoy winter camping but uh doing it with a truck is ironically challenging right yeah It'd yep. be easy to just park at Algonquin and go do some hiking and snowshoeing, sorry, but uh, trying to find a trail where you're allowed to drive on it. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. All right. yeah. That's at least in the southern part of Ontario. Right? So. Yeah, I imagine you get up towards Thunder Bay and stuff like that, or Timmins. Oh, are yeah. Good. That's a different story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the whole northern province is a different story for many, many reasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you guys been up to... Um... North Bay, because I did winter wheeling at North Bay area. There was a couple open trails there. Nice. I haven't gone in the winter there. No. no. I would take it out. Probably never do it again, but, you know, experience. It's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> Way too cold. <laughs> I had a fun one on uh, north of Sudbury. Um, there's this gigantic gravel road, and we went at the end of April one year. You know, April like 27 or something, right? And you're okay. It's literally 18 degrees outside. Mm-hmm. We get up to this road and maybe like two kilometers into it, it's just snow. <laughs> it is literally pure snow of like, I think it was like three feet tall almost, the snow. <laughs> and all we see is, you know, locals pulling up in their uh, trucks and trailers and jumping on through the snowmobiles and ripping it away. And I'm just like, oh. what the hell? This is a, <laughs> supposed to, this is an actual gravel road that heads up to Timmins. Like, <laughs> you know, no, no, it's three feet of snow on it. They're like, yeah, it's too early in the season. I'm like, it's end of April, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Doing here? yeah. I'm like, we're not in the Rockies here. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I then promptly got stuck. <laughs> I think I some guy was passing by in a, in a 3500 dually and uh just sheer force of luck of for all of us there was like a totally random shed which was apparently like opp maintains them uh, oh, yeah. every x number of kilometers i guess along in the area and 
outside of the shed was this, like a long chain um and a bunch of other gear that you could potentially use as a recovery and like shovels and stuff and thankfully for the chain you know we strapped around him and around me and he yanked me out of the ditch uh otherwise there's just no chance i'd be getting out of that thing. and no cell reception either right so it's like uh, sketchy but that's why i got a winch <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i've got a uh, friend that with a zr2 that loves snow wheeling and we're limited by our vehicle by our tire sizes right on how far yeah. we can go in that but i know not last winter winter before we went up and we got stuck a few times and then we ended up getting stuck where there was um it was it was deep and we got stuck but both vehicles got stuck and uh so we're kind of screwed so we got the recovery boards out and that just wasn't working for us we're playing around with recovery boards and we couldn't get there's no trees around there's no nothing so we ended up he was behind no i was behind him so he put a uh, ratchet strap through his rear tire through the spoke of the rim and around the tire and we hooked a um, toe strap up to that around the circumference of the tire. And oh, then he reversed. And then that, as he reversed the tire, and the, at the other end was hooked to my vehicle. And yeah. uh, as he reversed, the strap went around the circumference of the tire. So acting yeah. like a winch to pull him back to me kind of idea, oh, right? And just enough, it's just like three, four, I didn't think it was going to work. I'm like, this is stupid, right? But yeah. <laughs> It was brilliant. It was absolutely That's brilliant. Amazing. It got him back, you know, two feet or whatever, so we can get in there better with three recovery boards. And we ended up going two recovery boards deep on the front wheels, and it just sort of, you know, worked enough to get us up to, and then, you know, eventually worked on getting me unstuck in that, right? But I was like, yeah, yeah that was actually smart. I never would have thought of that. So That's awesome. Look at that. Now, say I learned something new tonight. That's perfect. I'm gonna remember that. Don't don't remember get that. How to get the hell out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I really don't want to fool my friends. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to end up on the Facebook recovery group. Guys. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys see that Bronco? Yeah. Yes. And oh, for yeah. honestly, I had like a mini anxiety attack when I thought it was one of our customers, and I was like, ah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. And then no, thankfully it wasn't. But like, yeah, it's just rough. This guy. Oh. So, yeah. I felt so bad for the guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was saying that uh apparently the little bridge that he was on, the side of it gave out. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I was about to ask, but it kind of looked that, that way from the photos. It's like who willingly wants to drive in like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he would have yeah. had to like literally cut through brush just to yeah. it, it made no sense, right? So yeah. it, it it would definitely make more sense for something to give out and make the truck slip in. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's an expensive. Uh... Oh, I, I feel bad for the guy. I mean, it, you're right. It totally looked like that. I mean, the bridge kind of looks sketchy to begin with, right? But <laughs> yeah. yeah, apparently it's like a beat up ATV bridge or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Stuff so. pushing his luck a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But that yeah. Trillium, that Trillium reco- off road recovery group, they got together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. guy that pulled them out, he actually comes to Overland. Uh, he came to Overland North once. He comes to Roaming Rally a lot, and oh, yeah. uh, he has a Colorado um, with a homemade uh, canopy, like you know the uh, Australian style, where they do yeah. the flatbed replacement oh, and yeah, then the yeah, whole yeah, thing yeah. built up. Um, so you know you open up the side doors and you slide out your fridge out of the yeah. side of the truck instead of the back. So yeah, he's a very technical fella and. Uh, He's uh, seems to be from what he was posting. It was that was the guy that ended up actually ultimately pulling him, yeah, uh, out of the thing. With a, you know a few other people, of course, but uh, yeah, I cool. think they had to have a few vehicles hooked up there. Here's... Yeah, just to get them to get the, all the sides lined up and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Because you can't that, just pull them straight. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that that would have been a fun recovery. You know, you got to sit there and think about it right before you do yeah. it. Yeah. In one of the pictures, I saw a guy inside. The pond or the river with the snorkel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to find yeah. trying, trying to hook up a, a line, I guess, probably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And we Do did, you, uh, is there anybody over there that does um, recovery courses? Um, not that I can think of officially. Like we, during Overland North, they host a few. Yeah. But yeah. this is uh, not like a, 
proper school or anything like that or the guys that came out that. to overland north this year um friends of mine yeah, chris, from uh, your way. yeah yeah chris, chris and richard and richard's a really good friend of mine he just lives like 45 minutes away from here nice. um but they um they do a ton of recovery courses and then the four-wheel drive association of bc um a lot of them have done the train the trainer program where they've gone down to the states and done um these programs so they can come up and and do trainings up here for, for uh, members. And uh, I think there's some stuff starting to happen in Alberta now as well too, but there's a few cool. companies in BC doing it and it seems yeah. to be really, they're always booked. They're always just packed. Right. So yeah. it's uh, I wonder it's, if something like that would take off here, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I think it would, you know, I think it would be a good idea. Um, yeah. But it's, I've been out with Richard and he's like, I said, you know, so how about we do this? And he's like, you know what? you probably you don't know, do it this way and it's like okay i never thought of that you know i've been doing this for years but i've still have i'm still doing it the way that i did 20 years ago right so mm-hmm. you know technology has changed with equipment and uh, the way people are doing things there's uh i, I want to take one of the courses just to because i know i'll learn stuff even though i've been doing it forever i know that i'll learn stuff so is there a, is there a specific like class um I say, I guess, like um, a cutoff to how many people can join, or is it like their limit, like you know, thirty people, or twenty people? I think it's like around twenty people max, kind of idea, just so everybody gets the good, like you know, one-on-one kind of yeah. chat, right? If you had too many people, I think you'd lose a lot of a lot of it. But yeah. um, I know the Full Drive Association does on theirs. The first day is driving. And uh, the second day is recovery, um, which I think is still a good idea too, because I think we can always learn on driving skills as well too, right? So, yeah. or there's less things... recovery if we drive better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? oh, that works. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it. I, I definitely want to do it because uh, I, I think it's. I think I could learn from it, right? So. That and a wilderness first aid course. I want to do a wilderness first aid course. Yeah, that's been on my list forever. I did a yeah. regular first aid course a couple of years back, and that was just that was an eye opener too. And but definitely want to do the wilderness one where it's like a couple of days out that they do the yeah you know, at least a full weekend course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it, it's uh, sadly I have to go to Vancouver to do it. That's uh, <laughs> the sucky part. Really? Yeah, yeah. They huh. don't have anything in here. So crazy. I have been talking to one guy based out of Whistler and um, he said, if I can get 20 people that he'll come up and do it here. So I might just okay. do that, organize something and get some people together. Cause I've got, you know, I've got a great first aid kit, um, like a 200 or $250 first aid kit, but um, it's useless if you don't know how to use it. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, I think uh I think that's, yeah, it's on my list. I think I'm going to try and organize something here probably in late fall or early spring. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one, one thing that was pointed out to me once by a, um, a lady that was, that runs these kind of courses as well in, in here in Ontario um, is in a regular first aid training you're, or like recovery training or any of that, you're taught to stabilize until 10 minutes from now an ambulance is going to get there. Yep. Right. Whereas with wilderness, they teach you things differently because you can't stabilize just for the next 10 minutes. The solution has to work for the next 48 hours, yeah. you know, because that's how long it's going to take for a helicopter to get there. It's going to, how long it's going to take for, you know, the friends to drag the guy out or something like that. Right. Yeah. And totally different, apparently way of thinking and approaching um, the the problem. So definitely yeah, that, that's one thing you can't. Probably. You know, you might have to drive three hours, drive yeah. this person three hours, right, or yeah. whatever. So it's yeah. It, um, I did a, a um, I did an episode back last fall, um, with um, where is it here? Um, with uh, Ken from Wild Med Kits. He's from Ontario and he's a, uh, he's a 
nurse who travels around. He does all kinds of stuff. He also does training and wilderness first aid training and stuff like that, but he also makes first aid kits. And um, I was so excited to have him on because we're actually wheeling the weekend or the day before. So I'm talking to my friends and I'm like, okay, if something happened now, what would we do? And we're like, uh, like we're up on the top of the Alpine, right? Up the top of a mountain. And we're like, if, you know, we don't really know what to do. Right. So it was actually, I got to listen to the episode again because it just learned so much. He's just give me all these ideas and things like that. But doing a course, I think would stick a lot better. Right. So, but even things like, you know, hypothermia and things that aren't like I've, I've done the first aid courses where all you do is you do CPR and then you do the defibrillator and that's it. Right. And it's like, this kind of sucks. <laughs> right. So yeah. I want to learn how, you know, if I have to make a splint or if I have to um, you do different things, like I want to learn the right way of doing it. Right. So I don't make things worse. So, but uh, I guess a good first aid kit's only good as a person using it. Always send for any tool, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how about you, Trisha? Have you got a good first aid kit or a um, first aid kit? I have two. Um, not oh, the good. greatest. Um, it's just basic stuff, like better than nothing. Just yeah, it's just a temporary solution. But I think yeah, doing a course or just knowing, like you said, um, like yeah, just stabilizing and knowing what to do for the next. 24 to 40 hours is a wholly whole different situation. Yeah. But yeah, two, two, one, two kits always in the Jeep. But that's good. That's good. The um have you guys tried any of those small fire extinguishers like in the can? We carry the elements at you the do, eh? Okay. Yeah. The E50s. Mm-hmm. They're pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan. Yeah, I've seen lots of videos on them and stuff like that. And I, I think yeah. that, uh, I think it's going to be one of my next things, I think, just to pick up, just to have. It's, uh, oh, yeah. Considering how tight, like they're, you know, the skinny, right? A little too yeah. essentially. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. last about, what, two and a half times the length of a there go. <laughs> regular yeah. ABC. The good thing it's sitting in my bedroom instead of in the Jeep. <laughs> it's me in your I know. It's a, it's a useful location. We <laughs> hey, never know how to fire at home. <laughs> I don't want to know what happens in your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a little too much friction over there no. <laughs> oh wow so it's really small i have like the old-fashioned yeah fire extinguisher strapped onto the roll cage <laughs> reminding me when i just when i was cleaning out the jeep after my trip i meant to swap this in and just forgot about it and then you know started overheating so i probably should have put it in but <laughs> i didn't get to that point yet so it's, it's all right <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, th- I think they're neat. Mean. It's nice and small, and everything is, seems pretty cool. So it's like quality built too, and you can mount it anywhere. So yeah. So nice where did, where was your trip? Where did you go? Uh, I went. Um, so I started here, and then went across um, to uh, Calgary, basically, and then from Calgary, I took the northern route up to Yukon and Alaska, and then Northwest Territories, and then back down the southern route through Vancouver. And nice back, uh, yeah it's about two and a half months so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun yeah that's awesome movies. yeah just me and the what dog was, what was your favorite um place to go uh i'd say for me yukon was like really eye-opening so, mm-hmm. yeah i like the the goal was to get to alaska and kind of experience that but then like i never s- lost track of that goal i guess but um after like crossing from BC into the Yukon, I was just like, you know, I like I could probably spend the rest of my trip here, but I was like, mm-hmm. you know, I have to keep moving forward, but um, definitely a lot more to see. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was like definitely, I don't know, it was just something, something special about it. Just wanted me to stay. So yeah, yeah it's definitely inspirational. <laughs> well, yeah. Did you get to see uh, with it the Northern Lights really well up there? And uh, not, uh, Unfortunately, not the, during the time I went, but okay. um, I was there, I think, probably this time last year. It's coming up to that, yeah. And it was almost, um, I think it was close to 24-hour daylight there. So, okay, so yeah. Yeah, it was like the darkest it got would be like, you know, dusk here. Okay. But I just remember in Inuvik, I was going to bed at like one thirty-two in the morning, and they were still mm-hmm. accepting people at the campsite. 
<laughs> oh wow! <laughs> They're just working all day. Yeah, it was raining like cats and dogs. It was raining sideways, and I remember trying to get my dog up into the tent, and um, with the clamshell, there wasn't really much coverage from the rain, especially when it's coming sideways. Yeah, so I was just like you know what, I'm gonna just accept it and <laughs> like, go to bed soaking when I went up there in all my rain gear and the dogs like shaking everything like oh man, <laughs> but uh, it was it was still fun like. I look back and I was like, you know what? If these little things didn't happen, then I wouldn't have something to talk about. Yeah. Share different experiences and kind of tricks how to uh, get around it. So, um, no, it was a lot of fun. Definitely recommend going. Nice. Definitely go again. <laughs> Would was was it hard to get used to being li- so light all the time? Uh, no, like yes and no. I kind of, uh, I guess it played into how long. Um, I would want to be on the road driving. So yeah. I would kind of lose track of that. And I had a rule to myself that um, I wouldn't drive more than, you know, six, seven hours a day mm-hmm. towards the start of the trip. And then afterwards, it kind of slowly turned to like eight to 10 to 12 hours just to make <laughs> up time back because I did have a couple breakdowns. So I had to kind of make up time. Yeah. Um, but in terms of getting used to like sleeping wise, it didn't really affect because like, with the tent, the the um, the fabric and the canvas are was uh, pretty thick, so it kind of blocked it all out. Right. Okay. But yeah. in that sense, it was it was all right. But um, yeah. How big were the bugs up there? Uh, pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the worst was um, I forgot where the hot springs were in BC. Li- Liard, Liard. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. They were like. You didn't want to be outside, basically. So yeah. that that day, the the like the deluxe room on the Airbnb awning really came in handy, uh, <laughs> just to like cook in there, hang out and read, and just hang out with the dog because he was like, "I'm not going outside." Yeah, <laughs> you're bugging him, and you know, just to roll down your window, just to you know, talk to the attend uh, the attendant at the at the booth. They're just covered. Um, <laughs> like I, I tried to do wild camping, but in terms of going to the hot springs, I figured you know, just camp at their site there and i could just walk the boardwalk to the hot spring um that was really like as as buggy as it was it was really cool to you know wake up early in the morning before everyone else was up walk to the hot springs quickly um and up until that point i hadn't seen a moose ever um and then you know sure enough i'm on this boardwalk and i'm reading this plaque of like um you know how this is their environment they're like eating and like hanging out in the water, blah, blah, blah. And sure enough, I turned around this huge moose center right behind me. I'm just like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. That was like kind of the takeaway of that uh, buggy experience. So that kind of like trumped it all. Yeah. But, made, made the bugs worth it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, yeah. That's probably the worst mosquitoes I've ever uh, dealt with. But uh, a lot of a lot of dragonflies, like massive. Like, yeah. Oh, just yeah. Peppered with them. <laughs> so. But yeah it was a lot of fun nice that's awesome do it again oh yeah yeah <laughs> I, think, I think i could agree on that one too <laughs> yeah it was uh you know like there's so much to see in like such little time but um you know just talking to the locals there too there's a lot of places that they recommended me to go to i just didn't have the time so yeah kind of made a mental note of that and just you know next time if i'm ever out there again definitely check those places out but, nice yeah. there's i'd love to go up to talk to yak tuck that's definitely on my yeah on my hit list a little bit easier for me than it is for you guys but yeah. um <laughs> just sure. to be able to go up to that arctic ocean <laughs> right? a and, couple thousand kilometers Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's definitely on my on my hit list for sure so i'm that probably is i'm probably like you guys i got so much on my hit list that it's tough to do it all right but yeah. that's really it's really cool up there yeah yeah just go you go in august or like early september don't go on later than that yeah snow yeah yeah snow sleet frozen yeah. mud all of it <laughs> like, yeah 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 i just got there for sure have you guys done much out east have you guys ventured out past quebec in that I'm going uh, end of August, two weeks. Nice. Just to do like Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, PEI. Yeah. I mean, not not going to be any uh, or much uh, off-roading. It's more of a family trip. Yeah. 
but yeah. uh just wanted to explore all the cool campsites and stuff like that and uh, yeah you know all the nice uh i had a, f- a friend send me stuff that would be like uh camping right on the ocean in like cool. meet cove nova scotia and i'm like yes i'm down let's do this that's awesome so and then we'll see next year i might do uh, organize a trip for newfoundland yeah so cool yeah, yeah that's i well, i used to go to uh new um uh newfoundland every fall for the fall colors wow. a friend and i would go for a quick trip out and spend a few days out in newfoundland Quick. yeah <laughs> well when i was living on toronto right so it's still it's, it's still a, man cool. it's still a drive yeah it's still a drive but yeah, yeah we we went out there three years in a row in the fall wow. the, to photograph nice. the colors and stuff like that and yeah this is absolutely gorgeous right but i i want to yeah. get out into the pei of nova scotia and all that so one day <laughs> oh yeah there i was there um back when i was you know my younger like teens but it was more like um like a scouts trip so we were kind of like coach bust around everywhere with our camping gear um but we did we did uh ground camp but it was more like um you know hitting all the tourist attractions all that stuff so that was fun but like just driving out there and doing like seeing it for yourself again and just going to different places would be a lot i think more our speed <laughs> yeah yeah when, what we used to do so but even even the cities and stuff like that would be kind of cool to check out some of the cities and i'm a i'm a huge lover of history right so seeing some of the the history is so old there right so yeah i remember we cool. went to uh, pier 21 there yeah and we um we had gone to like the i guess all the lists of the uh immigrants that came through there and it was the it was like part of the Ukrainian base scouts. So we would kind of go and look through all the Ukrainian names that came by to see if we saw any of our like family members or like yeah. same last names or similar last names. It was it was pretty neat. I remember going there and uh we were all like, Okay, let's go let's go see if we can find like you know, grandma and grandpa, right? Yeah. Aww. That's cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. Awesome guys. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time. I think uh it was great and We'll uh, we'll do this again, and I think we'll advertise it a bit more, get some more people out, and mm-hmm. have some good ch- conversations. So, but we definitely have to Sounds get good. together with you guys and have a good chat um, again about the shop again, Mike, and yeah, and the guys, and go for and there. share some fun. Ask yeah. Henry about his Mexico stories. He's got some <laughs> <laughs> some fun stuff. What ask what he didn't believe. <laughs> Yeah, our yeah. police. Yeah. yeah See, that's cool. I've never been to well, I've been down to Mexico, but I've never been to any South American countries. So yeah. I would just love to get down there. Trisha was talking to who some people earlier. Um, and I think we're gonna try and get them onto the podcast. And they're going from uh, what was it? It was Alaska to Argentina. Yeah, Alaska to All Argentina. Right. Yeah. But they haven't been done much overlanding. So yeah. it'll be oh. a bit of an eye opener for them i think but yeah <laughs> <laughs> like surprise surprise <laughs> exactly. uh but that'll, that'll be a heck of a trip though that would be absolutely wild yeah yeah that's my <laughs> hope for fingers crossed 2025 maybe uh-huh. yeah matt news break <laughs> <laughs> i figured something was coming <laughs> yeah yeah no that, we've been we've been hoping to do it that was literally like our plan is to try to get it for 25 because that's when both of our girls we think would be old enough to actually appreciate what they see and yeah. where they're going yeah um and before they get too far into you know schooling and you know like grade one nobody cares if you miss yeah six months <laughs> yeah. right but <laughs> grade eight months. would be a totally different topic right cool. um so yeah and, uh, and my wife's argentinian so she's got family mm. all all over south america and it's uh it'll help with yeah. certain things obviously right yeah so, definitely yeah. that's awesome that would be one heck of a trip oh yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah, for that. Oh, yeah. Cool. awesome guys well, yeah, we will. Uh, yeah, we'll get together. We'll hook up and uh, we'll get together and uh, share some good stories and go from there. Cool. But, uh, Sounds good. Thanks for coming by, guys. And um, yeah, I think we'll we'll do it again and hopefully get some more people in here and it'll uh, 
it'll be, it'll come with time. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. See ya. So Trisha, oh, there yeah. it is. Pause. Stop recording. There it is.